Okay. Lumen? Lumen. Yeah, they say don't use lumen anymore, and then you look at it, and there have been releases for it, and... <laughs> okay, so if you're... So Drupal developers. Why Drupal developers should also learn Laravel? Um, I'm Lee Walker. Uh, I've been doing Drupal 15-ish years, something like that, on Drupal.org. A bit longer than that. Um, I organise the Chattanooga Users Group, and we run Drupal Camp Chattanooga, which will be November the 2nd this year. We always do the first weekend in November. And I'm Drupal Nuga on Zitter. Right, so part of this is... In 45 minutes, it's going to be really hard to teach anyone any Laravel. My, my, actually, let's do this. What do I want out of this talk? Um, introduce the friends in my community to another useful, practical, and really, really enjoyable tool uh, that reuses your current existing skill sets, right? You currently do things with Composer, build stuff in PHP. You have everything you need to build stuff in Laravel already. If you're building custom modules, you can do it. It's not very hard. There's nothing crazy to learn, and it's all terribly sensible and well documented. Um, also, I encourage you to join the community, the Laravel community. Uh, we need to teach them what we call get off the Drupal island, because they are all on the Laravel island. Uh, if there's something to be built, they build their own. Um, when they were looking for a Docker container to build Laravel in, they were like, oh, we haven't got a Docker one. I was like, I build all mine in Lando. Another guy was like, I build all mine in DDEV. And they went, we present to you, sale, when we built ourselves. And you're like, oh my gosh, really? There's like a hu huge numbers of Twitter posts going DDEV and Lando at them, and they went, we're going to build our own. And it's not as good. It's a very loose wrap around Docker Compose. So they have a lot of not invented here things. I'm, I'm guessing if you've done any back end stuff, uh, so front end stuff, you probably used Laravel Mix, which is really a wrap around Webpack, which makes Webpack sensible, right? Um, it has nothing at all to do with Laravel. You don't need any Laravel in it, it's just what they called it. So it gives you the 85% of the piece to use out of Webpack without that stupid YAML file, JSON file that's now just three lines and it all works. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I really love using Laravel, um, but I really think they should. Uh, Get off the Drupal Island. Get off the Laravel Islands, right? Right. So, kind of did a test demo of this talk a couple of times to different people, different user groups. And this is kind of what, basically, why is Laravel good for Drupal developers? Talk about Laravel the framework, talk about Laravel the community, and we'll see how the Laravel the quick demo goes. It's mostly to give you an idea of how it all fits together to how to get started. Uh, and the other thing is, put a bug in your ear. So say, like, why would you use Laravel? Why wouldn't you use Drupal? I think that's my next talk, my next one, actually. Um, so yeah, it's a complementary skill. You've already learned half of these skills in Drupal. You can go almost straight to Laravel and pick up as if you're 50% of the way along. I picked up a book on Laravel on Monday, by Friday, I was actually pushing things to a demo site for my clients, and eventually those ended up in, in, on live. And, you know, I can do things, but you can do things as well. It's not, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the room. I just sat down and did, did a little bit of work on it. If you love Drupal, you'll love Laravel. Similar skills, right? PHP Composer, Symfony, Lando, Docker. The symphony in Drupal leaks through. You know when you're looking at symphony. It less so with Laravel. Um, so composer-based, like modern PHP. Um, you use symphony components, just like Drupal. The abstraction just isn't as leaky as Drupal's is. They use Blade as a templating engine rather than Twig. But they're analogous in a way that's just crazy. And if you, if you know how Twig works, you would go, oh, Blade must have the, oh it does, it has exactly the same things. The documentation's amazing. Every time there's a new release, 
they go through every single line in the documentation and touch it. Um, that's something you can't be understated how great that is. Um, Laravel 11 was supposed to be out at Laracon EU just a few weeks ago, but it's been delayed. It's not quite out yet. But it's also a good time to start looking at Laravel for the first time because I'll show you a difference between 10 and 11. What they've done is they've hit all these extra files that when you uh, create a new project, the compose a new project, Laravel, Laravel, it puts an enormous amount of code in. A bunch of config files, a bunch of kernel files, you never touch them. And it's just confusing. Now they're hidden deeper in the core and there's less for you to initially look at to get going. So they just did a simplification for new users. Because one of the things they say on the Laravel is it's built for developer happiness. It's built for you guys to go, this is fantastic, let's use this, right? If you're building a site that requires content and to do content moderation and give it to editors, you're not going to build that in Laravel. Um, you build it in Drupal, right? Standard things. So if someone comes to you and said, I want more of an app or a CRUD style application written, delivered over the web, and the reason I have built this in this more than once, and you think I'd have learned my a lesson. Um, but when it came to rebuild it, we're like, let's do it in Laravel, and it absolutely takes over at that point. That's what I'm saying, it's complementary. There is a Laravel CMS, and it's Datamic. Um, I've spoken to those guys, they're big on the headless thing, um, but 100% headless website is, uh, we have a number of sad conversations about that. A lot of people push it. I personally think it's bullshit. You just, you want to, add pieces in. So CRUD, if you don't really know what CRUD is, create, read, update, delete, so you're writing things into a database. Generally, someone will come, instead of saying, I want content on the site, they'll say, I've got this data, and they'll kind of end up with a database schema, how it all works together. If they come at you with that, build it in Laravel, it's really, really easy. Um, we had three weeks to get a spent nuclear fuel assembly tracking thing running and we already had to spend fuel stuff in Drupal, so I built a custom module. We did it, we demoed it for the Department of Energy. They went, fantastic, and then never thought about it for 18 months. We migrated from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. We left that behind. Then they came back and said, oh, we'll do something now. And I was like, now I'm going to build it in Laravel. Let's do it right. So, very productive, very quickly. Very enjoyable. Like, I'm not sure you could say all those things about Drupal all the time, right? It's not always enjoyable. Sometimes I walk around outside muttering to myself and banging my head against the wall because I'm like, how the heck does that work? Then you get that, oh, that's right, that's how that works moment. And then, then it's enjoyable. Um, yeah. Oh, I have some resources for you. Two really good ones, which is the new book and uh, a boot camp online for free. If you do those, you know you're, as a Drupal guy, you'll be up and running with Laravel. Really, really simple. So it's a full stack PHP web framework. Famous for well-crafted, much loved developer experience. And yeah, much loved developer experience. That's not, that's not really Drupal most of the time, right? Uh, it has a following up amongst independent developers because of clean, minimal code. There's an ecosystem of tools to support you. And it's actually one of the ways that they support their, their ongoing funding. So if you go onto laravel.com, you'll see a whole drop down of, from the ecosystem. We'll show them in a minute. Some of them are paid and some of them aren't. Some of them are free. Um, but the paid ones are tens of dollars a month um, and do something really useful for you that's worth the money. And that's how they actually keep funding development of Laravel. So much so that Taylor Orwell, I wrote at Laravel, bought himself a new car. It was a Lamborghini. <laughs> the, uh, but he works really, really hard on it. So there are out-of-box solutions for user authentication. So whether you want social ones like GitHub and Twitter, you know, logging with that, it, 
You, you download the package, turn it on, boom, you're away. Two-factor auth. There's Breeze and Jetstream as well, which are packages, and they are designed to log you in depending on how, what kind of level you want, whether you want two-factor auth through Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator, or you just want basic login. There's payments through cashier, there's a full text search through Scout, there's a whole bunch of them, we'll show you those in a minute. It's an M MVC framework, so model view controller works just like you expect it to. The model talks to the database, uh, the, the usual DB engines and MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, SQLite. Uh, the view uses template, view, the view is Blade templates, looks a lot like Twig. So what we're really talking about is what we like to call a modern monolith, right? The centralized, um, we can actually update it and it's not just sit there and, and, and be terrible. So we, right now I'm kind of trying to sell you on Laravel if you haven't seen it before. All right. Happy devs, better code. A helper method for just about anything you, you need. Um, they, you tend to use interesting words. So you'll see words like illuminate and spark and artisans and elegant. Breath of fresh air, fresh start, rapid, warp speed. They use all of these words all the time. And you start to feel, oh, maybe I could be warp speed. I like that. And the two most strongly communicated values are increased developer speed and developer happiness. So, and the fact that they touch their, their documentation every time. At its core, it's about equipping and enabling developers. And the goal is to provide simple, clear, beautiful code and features that help developers learn, start, and develop and write code that's simple, clear, and lasting. It is very, very easy to keep your Laravel up to date. Like same way we do with Drupal with the minor updates, you just keep, keep it up to date when there's a major version. You run, you know, you, you, you code standard tool to say which things have been deprecated, you fix those and move it on. They also have, they have a service that will do that for you, for each version of Laravel. And you give it your GitHub, it produces merge requests for all the changes, and for $29 it goes here. These are all the merge requests you need to go from this version of Laravel to the next one. And you pay for each version, but Laravel used to be like 5, 5, 5, 6, 5, 5, 5, 6, and then it went 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and became easier. But some people have like Laravel 5.2 sites out there. They spend like $300 on this site, do the merge request, they've got Laravel 10 running um, in a few hours. So that, that's pretty awesome. That's one of their paid things that makes it work. And it's really PHP stand, PHP CS, catching all of that behind the scenes. And then Rector, actually writing the things for you. <coughs> so it's all tools we're used to. It's just kind of hidden behind a, a Laravelli name. Yeah, so happy developers make the best code. So also, it's, it's relatively, it tends, tends, tends to want you to do simpler things first. Refactor later. So you might want to dependency inject a whole bunch of things and do all of this. But Laravel allows you to use their facades to quickly get to things. And if you look down through some of your code and you go, eh, I'm using a lot of facades, that generally means go ahead and refactor it. But it doesn't say do it the best practice way, absolutely the hardest way, first, get it working, come back and refactor it later. Um, and then they have kind of best practices for if you're looking at dozens and dozens of facades in a single controller, eh, you might want to change what you're doing there. So the simplest possible application to solve your needs with the idea that that doesn't box you into a corner at that point refactoring it and, and, do, and working forwards um, will, is easy enough to do. But sometimes you just need to demo something to your boss. And getting it out and running, that, that's, that's good. So we're talking about MVC. It is easy to use. It's open source. Big community. The community is very much like ours. Um, they're all into talking to each other and telling each other how it works. Um, 
Laracon US is in Dallas in August this year. I'll be going to that. Um, <clears throat> they always have it in the middle of a city. They don't like put it in a conference hall somewhere. They put it somewhere fun. This year it's in Deep Ellum. So ugh, you, you, there's hundreds of bars around there and things, right? Deep Ellum, Dallas. So rapid development framework, easy learning curve, minimize the steps between learning a new app and publishing it. Um, so you, will, you think about Laravel differently than Drupal. You don't go, oh, I need a database table. I need to link these things together. And you just go, I want a piece of content. And Drupal handles all that underneath. Um, with Laravel, you're much more thinking about what the scheme of your database is going to look like. So if anyone comes to you and says, I've got a thing, and you know, throughout their discussions, there's now a database scheme is kind of sketched out, that's normally a good indication. <coughs> building Laravel, don't build in Drupal. You can build it in Drupal, but I've done that twice now, and every, it's come back to bite me every time. There's a saying in, in Laravel that you kind of download a couple of their packages, and it just works. And that's like the Drupal, there's a module for that. And sometimes you can just pull the packages you need. There's a couple of really good people spat C out of the out of the out of the um, out of Europe. If they've published anything, use theirs first. Um, there's some really uh, there. There's a guy, uh, Freck, 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 Freck. There's Freak and he, <laughs> but it's Freck. Freck van der Horten. He's a super smart guy. Yeah, I can't believe the rate they publish open source packages to help you out. So yeah, we'll talk about the ecosystem of tools. I'm just kind of going through. What's this one? Oh, this. Everyone seen the Adam.dev guy on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. He's been talking about Laravel. He has a live stream going, and he goes, "I've heard Laravel is great." And this is the thing: Laravel is incredible. I don't know why we're not all using it. Was his what he said from a JavaScript guy after about 40 minutes of using it. And he just sat down and said, how do I do this? Went through the documentation and live, started installing and messing with it and seeing what it did. And he's, he's a reasonably happy guy, for a JavaScript guy, right? Some of the JavaScript communities can be quite, we have quite a lot of drama in them and people shouting and what's going on. And um, I think what they said was, uh, yeah, the Laravel people I see in my timeline, they all seem to be happy and avoid all the drama. Ship the good code, I want a piece of that. Alright, drama free. Just go. Uh, they do a lot of stuff on on Twitter. Um, they don't have a centralised place like Dribble.org that they kind of hang and organise things. They're not quite that size yet, I don't think. Um, they still kind of all know each other. Very welcoming. We went. I went for the first one last year. Last year, they had a, a, a Laracon in Nashville which is just two hours away from me. And we turned up, said hi to everybody. Um, we had some great presentations. Uh, so Laravel News is a good place to catch them. Uh, I, they do hang out on IRC as well. So Taylor's actually been, Taylor Orwell who designed it said, what we need for an open source community. There's two things they decided. Good documentation, welcoming community. We've got at least one of those. <laughs> we have some documentation and a welcoming community. I think uh, Drupal could use some Laravel love on its documentation. So why use Laravel over other tools that are out there, right? Uh, you can bring your ideas to reality quickly with no wasted code, modern coding standards, vibrant community, ecosystem of things to support you. You don't necessarily want to build you know, a, a shopping cart or a way to take credit cards. They have all of that that you can just do the package in and pay them tens of dollars a month to, a month to do that. So it's nothing like, I've got a great big site, I need to publish it on Pantheon. They're like, yeah, great, that's a thousand dollars a month. Nothing's like that. Yet.
These guys love Tailwind and Vue. Vue would not be Vue.js if it wasn't for the Laravel guys. They bought into it hook, line, and sinker. And when you use Vue, using Vue with Laravel is dead simple. They've got an, a, um, I'm trying to think what the heck it's called now. There's a JavaScript library that sits in between that makes it work with React or Vue. And the plumbing's already thought through. Like with, with Drupal, when we want to put React on a page, you're kind of like, I'll stick it on, I'll write my own controller, and we'll have to decide how that works. And this is a one-off, and this one's a one-off, and this one's a one-off. But for Laravel, you want those, it's just re all, re all ready to go out the box. Batteries included is one of the phrases they use. Also, if you're more of a front-end person who wants, you know, I'd quite like to learn some of this back-end stuff, um, Laravel is an easy way into that because Drupal can be kind of intimidating. Laravel is a much easier way to get into that and everything you learn will, will, will work for you to learn for more Drupal as well. It will ease your, ease your way into Drupal. So this Laravel up and running book by the third edition. <coughs> That's, the third edition is Laravel 10. The second edition is Laravel 5.2. That's <laughs> really old. And it's still, like, Amazon will still sell it to you. But don't buy it. It's, that will go from beginning to end. If you're a book person, Laravel up and running. If you're a video person, laracast.com. Um, I bought a lifetime subscription for the price of one year of Drupalize Me. So you can buy a lifetime subscription for that. I also found out that... Uh, the guy who runs that is an ex Chattanooga guy. So we're like, maybe you can get him to come to my camp. He lives in Orlando. He lives in Orlando now, yeah. He moved. The uh, uh, Jeffrey Way. Uh, also, Laracasts, and there's Symphony Casts to go with it if you're learning Symphony. Um, he assumes you're a professional developer already and know what you're talking about, and he starts at your level. A lot of these video things started. First of all, we have to decide, you know, um, very, very basic. Most videos, tutorial videos, I run at at least one and a half speed. Here's, I very rarely get over 1.25, so. They have, a lot of casts have a lot of other things on here. This is where I learned all my Cypress testing from. Um, they have Docker, they have Laravel specific, but also, learn your PHP. If you want to learn how v if you want to dig deep into your VS Code tool and use it better, which everyone should if you use VS Code, <coughs> they have a whole bunch of videos on it. Um, they are eight to twelve minutes each one. So you can get a cup of coffee, sit down, watch one, move on with your day. Do one a day, two a day, and soon you're using your tools better. So PHP Storm, VS Code, Docker, um, trying to learn JavaScript or Git or whatever it happens to be, they've got a lot of things on it. And it is pretty cheap for a lifetime subscription. Or you can buy like $99 a year or something it is. <coughs> they have Artisan. You will Lando or DDEV Artisan or PHP Artisan where you just normally run Drush. So you generate, it will generate code, it will do all sorts of things. Artisan, pretty much. We, where we write now Drush plugins to make some of our things work for our modules, you can write an Artisan plugin just as easily. The thing I miss for Drupal is having a REPL. You want to basically a regex print read, sorry, print loop, isn't it? I forget what the unit is now. Um, where you can interactively interact with your database and ask it questions. Um, Tinker, so you just pick up PHP Artisan Tinker, comes up, connect to the database, do the thing. So you can interactively query database and do things, you know, and step through it and go, oh, that's what I need, and you write that in code. So instead of writing the code and keep reloading it and debugging it, you can actually interactively tinker with it, which is why it's called Tinker. And they sell a tool called Tinkerwell, which is Tinker on steroids. Um, I think it's $50 a year. Um, if you're building stuff in, in Laravel, then Tinkerwell's worth the money. Also, if you beach PHP Storm, there is a uh, Laravel Idea plugin, which I think is another $50 a year. But that gives you 
code completion. It's free for the first month. When it turns itself off, you're like, where's my credit card? <laughs> you can't, it's so hard. It makes life so easy. This is the thing I wish I had in trouble. So collections. When you go to Laravel, you go, load me stuff in the database. And Laravel, using Eloquent, just goes, here's a collection. Load me stuff in the database. Here's a collection. It always comes back as a collection, a Laravel collection. And you can work on it functionally. So map through everything in here, do the thing, pull these two cables out, pull these two, tape, two columns out of the table, put them together, thank you, and it goes chain, 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 thank you, I'm done. You can read down it, there's no multiple levels of for loops to try and get into it and faff around. You just say, give me everything out of this, this particular thing out of this that I need. The collection class has about 60 different methods on it, and one you need is there. I did a whole bunch of stuff. I think I spent like three months in Laravel without touching too much Drupal for a while, till, till the site was launched. <coughs> I went back to Drupal, went, get my stuff out of the database. I'm like, what the heck is this? I was so used to collections that it just was painful. At the point, I was like, surely someone's written collections for Drupal. And yes, they had, and they started on it, and then realized it was too hard to keep up with and kind of abandoned it. Um, that was uh, Oliver Davis, actually out of the UK, did it. Um, so let's show you a little bit, do a quick demo. So you should use Laravel is basically where I'm, where I'm going on this. If you are building an app, if you're building sort of CRUD type things, that's absolutely not content management. And I'm sure every you've been asked to build something, someone's going, oh, can you build me something that does? And you're giving it to people over the web, then do it through Laravel, because you will be really quick at building stuff up. Even though it's entirely new, everything you've learned from Drupal and how that works and PHP, it all carries over. Right. Let's pull out, how many have we got up in here? There are a lot, I'm just basically gonna drop in. Of course, now I've gotta do it. Let's see if I can just mirror this one over here. So I don't have to keep dragging things between. Uh, Oh, here we go. Main display. It's going to go right. No, it's not going to go. There we go. That's better. Mirror. That's what I needed. So actually, before we do that, so the Laravel main page, there's this ego, ecosystem thing here. And you can see there's all these tools that they do for you. So Point is PHP CS with all the Laravel stuff wrapped around it, ready to go. Um, Breeze is a login, cashier. Now, one of the interesting things they do is Livewire. <coughs> so if you're doing your front end in React, and Inert Inertia.js, that's it. Inertia.js is the plumbing between it. Or Vue and Inertia.js. If you've got people that want to build that kind of stuff, you can do that. <coughs> it's already plumbed in. But if you've got a smaller team and you want that kind of interactivity, you can get it through Livewire, which is you simply put HTML attributes in, a call the back end that goes through everything, renders the HTML, sends it back <coughs> to the front end, and it just swaps out what's in the div. If you've seen HTMX, HTMX is a, a standardized version of that. And there is some discussion about putting HTMX into Drupal. Because nobody wants to write that much JavaScript, right? Custom JavaScript all the time. 
you are making an AJAX call to the back end, it's doing something, it renders it on the back end as HTML and sends HTML back over the wire. If you use Git, GitHub and you start typing into a search and it's offering suggestions, that's the Ruby on Rails version of Livewire doing that. And the, they used to call it HTML over the wire. AJAX back, HT, sends HTML back. So the nice thing is you can debug it easier because you set the, back, the breakpoints in your back end. It goes through your standard rendering like it was regular templates. Then the very last thing it does is send that back over the wire to the AJAX. So you don't actually have to write any JavaScript on the front end. You simply put HTML attributes in. So HTMX is similar that way. So you can punch small team, you want interactivity without page reloads, live wire will get you that. HTMX will get you that as well. Um, and it looks like you've got a much larger team than you actually have working for your clients. <laughs> the one I do like, Forge. <coughs> you need to send your stuff live, right? You can buy a Forge account. This is the one of the ones that you do, it does cost. Plumb it into your DigitalOcean account and say, I want you to provision me a box. It goes and puts everything on that box you need to do Laravel. You don't have to go, now you have to install Ubuntu and put the thing on and make sure we've got it. This will do it for you. Um, and it will also you know, push code, Laravel code out onto it. So it's like your own little mini Pantheon. And if you look at the, uh, the pricing, $20 a month gets you Raspberry Pi. What $20 a month says is unlimited servers. So you can do that. Now, you're still paying for your DigitalOcean or your AWS, but we're talking about developer happiness, right? This is the donkey work we don't want to do. We want to build apps and push them out. It handles it all for you. It's like they thought of all the pain points and made them tens of dollars a month to, to solve that. Which, that's fantastic. I'll take that every time. That's the shut up and take my money moment, right? They've also got, so Vapor is their serverless. So you can do the same thing on AWS as serverless. For those people who do serverless, uh, who like this idea of serverless. So they've got that as well. Again, tens of dollars a month. And it's not per client, it's just tens of dollars a month for you. If you've got multiple clients, it all works. What else we've got in here? So Octane is there. Runs PHP in memory. So instead of rebooting PHP each time and rebootstrapping everything, it holds everything in memory, so it's really, really fast. And have you guys seen this Franken PHP? Woo, speedy. Did I, did I spell that wrong? It is really slow. Um, but I love the Franklin PHP because it is an elephant in green with a Frankenstein bolt through its neck. <laughs> and you can put Franklin PHP. Franklin PHP is a Go written server for PHP, so you don't do it in Apache anymore, you just stick it in. And they put Franken PHP in Octane with Laravel on it. So they've kind of put these layers of fastness together. Um, there's also, uh, I don't know if you've seen the native PHP thing people have been pushing. That was the Laravel people doing that as well. So it's designed so you can write a Laravel app and run it on a Mac like it's a native Mac app. It's running Apache and stuff in the background. It's all just hidden from you. Um, but it does, right now it does expose all your code. If you know where to go, they can find all your source code because it's PHP. So they're working on ways of getting around that. They've also got, this one's kind of interesting. So Herd, for the Mac only. Uh, uh, actually, did they do Windows just recently? For those of you who hate Docker, this isn't Laravel, this isn't Laravel specific. This manages all your PHP, different versions. It manages your mail hog, well not mail hog, whatever it took over from mail hog, to grab all of that stuff. So you can run multiple different, different PHP applications 
without having to like spin up Docker for each one. But uh, I'm okay with Docker. But if you're not, if you're an ex-map person and haven't quite got to Docker yet, this might be a good stopgap. That's Mike Herschel, that is. <laughs> He's still using MAMP. The, oh gosh, that's just really. Can I make that light? Dark light? Is that a bit better? Oh my goodness. Come on. So, bootcamp.laravel.com. If you know nothing about Laravel, I want to you know, tinker with something <coughs> and learn it out. They, made, they said, let's build Chirper. Basically, they're building a Twitter client. And they say, do you want to build it in Blade? So regular old PHP templates. Do you want to build it in Vue with Inertia.js? We'll show you how that works. Do you want to build it in React with Inertia.js? We'll show you how that works. So you can actually go through, build it once in their in the Blade templates, go back through and build it again, and it will teach you everything you need to write a, to write Laravel in the proper way. Oh, and Livewire as well, of course. We're talking about the HTML over the wire, um, the HTMX. So what do you want to build it in? We want to build it in Livewire. We want to build it. And they basically talk you through each part. JavaScript inertia, so there's a view piece. This is how React works. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. It's not going to work at all, is it? Turn off the lights. That's a bit better. So it, it looks like there's a lot going on here, and it's like, where the heck do I get started? Um, whenever anything comes in for Laravel, it hits the index PHP just like we used to. And the first thing it does is it goes to this routes web.php. And in here, it'll find it, right? Go to slash. What I want it to do, and it just done an eight. Some, normally what here it says, Go to a controller via some middleware, check some, they have an idea of, they say, can, can you do this, can you do X, can you do Y? It's like permissions individually. But they also have a concept of gates, which is more like roles. Do you uh, zoom in the text? Let's see if that works. How do we do that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Control, shift, period. Is that presenter view? Oh. No, it just increases the size of your phone. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. I'm never going to get it back, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing this before. I remember dropping into Presenter View years ago and then having to program in Presenter View for like three days before I worked out. <laughs> so, there's a. If you're trying to roll a console app as well, you can do it. So they break the roots out into different. Usually in, in Laravel 10, there's about six of these in here, but most people never touch them, so this is the Laravel 11 where they've hidden them. So whenever you see this return view, what you do is you add .blade.php to this, and that's the template it goes to. Is the URI and the view part, is that just um, decorative? Like, that's oh, that's, uh, right? that's PHP, so I'm telling me that that's what it is. Oh, okay. Um, and same with the view, see, because it understands that's the Laravel idea plugin <coughs> working. Can you use Xdebug? Oh, yes. Oh, I use Xdebug everywhere. If you're not using Xdebug, sit down and work out how to use Xdebug because, oh my gosh. This actually has a, a, a DD, which is debug and die, dump and die. When you DD something, it actually spits things out to the page in a nice way, instead of that like, big text on white. But you'll stop DDing on, uh, on this. So what, what I can do in here is simply, because I've got this, it knows the welcome block blade. Let's open this up. And when you look at this, this is all just HTML. Nothing really clever about it. There's a couple of if root has. So this is indeed, does it have this? Can I do this? Does the user pass through this gate? And they're all rel relatively straightforward. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, tailwind classes you can see there. 
And that's just the front page. And if we find... Da, da, da. Did Frank and Pitch beat in the front? No, no, it is. When you first start it, <coughs> this, is the, this, this is that welcome page. And it's kind of nice because it's like Laravel 11 dev, Pitch 215, and that's the page we just saw. But that's not very useful, right? But that's what you get out of the box. So what it does is, let's find a piece of documentation. We manage spent nuclear fuel assemblies using Laravel. Originally that was in Drupal. Um, so the Department of Energy needs to track every piece of spent nuclear fuel from when it was fuel to now it's spent through the reactors, through the cooling, into, into the casks and stored somewhere. Partially because there's still energy in that that might not be useful, but you can't put too much of that energy together or what's, what physicists term criticality. Criticality is not a word you want to be going, what was that too much of? Let's find it, what we are here. This is uh, level 10. Can you see it? Why not? Okay. Um, this is a, a whole bunch of routes in here you can see. Whereas you can do groups together. So there's a prefix of an API. So API, if you do get the API slash something, we want you to go to this controller. If you post, you go to this controller. Um, if you post and attach to here. So it's using the standard HTTP verbs to do things. Um, when you build a controller, you can say, go ahead and build me a controller, make it a standard controller, and it will put all of these, generally if you're doing a get on a slash, it calls the, wants you to call index on the controller. And they're all called the same thing every single time. So what you start to see is this common pattern being used. And you, when it comes for you to do it, you're like, oh, I'll just make mine the same. So there's all sorts of routes together. So if you would want to know where anything goes, you can come to your web.php and work it out in here. You can work out what's going on and what's being passed in and where it's going. So let's pick one. Let's just pick one at random because random's good. <laughs> what's this? So okay. So we if we do so the API admin it goes to some middleware. So this middleware will check our authorization. As a not standalone, a separate function. So if we post, we go to this facility note controller class. And in here you'll see there's an index. Let's put the uh, git problems terminal. Where's my structure? There it is. So you're constantly, oh, that's terrible. Um, so you're seeing index store. So when you c call a get on it, it'll call index by default. It's just convention. When you call a post on the same one, it will say call store in this class, and then you'll store it in the same way. So it becomes really second nature really quickly. And you can literally tell, let's pull this. Let's see which one we're in. Do the routes get compiled or are they interpreted every time? You can. You can basically compile it effectively, cache them. Um, here's the thing where Laravel's a bit lacking. Caching, you manage all your own caching yourself. So they expect you to use Redis, but you can plumb in anything into the caching and still the cache read, cache write, you know, cache validate things work no matter what the back end happens to be. But you have to think about the caching yourself. Um, it's fine, I'm sure there's some more caching pieces in. There might actually be a load of packages out there that will do that. Just check the time. Um, I think the best thing I can say for, for it is if you work, buy Matt Stauffer's book, work through bootcamp.laravel.com. Um, it took me about a day to be fully sold on it. And it's not, not in any way stops me doing Drupal. I still love Drupal as much as I ever did, although I see the rough edges of Drupal 
compared to some places where Laravel shines. And I see the rough edges of Laravel where Drupal shines, right? So if you are going to be asked to build more app style, and you already build Drupal modules, do some custom development, then Laravel is probably a really, really good choice for you. It will be. Sorry. They look just like any other. Just a website. Um, they tend to be behind logins, right? They don't tend to be like that website. If you're building a web that people look at it and look at, you're going to build that in Drupal, in a, in a CMS. There is a. Uh, there's, I think there's a built with Laravel. Yeah, made with Laravel. There we go. But when you kind of look at things in here, they tend to be either tools for Laravel users or let's give it to that. Things that require you to log in to make things happen because you're selling something. You're managing data for a client. But like, we're managing content for clients in Drupal, but that content is supposed to be shown to everybody. In Laravel, you're managing, you're managing their data in a database schema and making sure that ups and writes and validates and everything. Um, but you, that's generally not public. That's just for people that log in. There's, yes, the Tamic, they have a, a CMS. Um, Actually, if you go through this and you go, CMS is built with Laravel, there's this massive list of them. And you know, they've got like four or five dedicated developers that really want to build their own CMS. But one of the reasons quite a few of us came to Drupal is we did that back in the day and realized how hard that is. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, I should use something else. And then Drupal pops out, right? These guys are still going through that. Uh, yeah, try Bootcamp. .laravel.com, you don't have to do anything. If you've already got the tools to build Drupal, you can work through that and decide whether it's for you. Um, it is another tool we can sell to our clients. And we should all, you know, two great communities, we, there's no reason we shouldn't all get along, we're all PHP. So that was a bit roundabout, but <laughs> there's a lot to get through in 45 minutes, right? You're trying to give you an idea of what it looks like, encourage. Um, I really, really love working with Laravel. It's fun to work with. I enjoy working with it. I like engaging with the guys online and asking questions. Um, it just fits ne neatly into how I do things with Drupal as well. Are there any government sites you use Oh, that's a good question. Uh, absolutely, because I built one. By the way, describe the, those apps like my dear. Side that okay, I'm building this one in Laravel. I mean, from your personal experience, what do they do? Like, there's maybe like a couple of examples. There's the current applications, right? So, say, sorry, but <laughs> yes, yeah, so, sorry. Said so that uh, you're building like these applications, like current applications in Laravel, right? Like, yeah. you're, you're, like as far as it's been determined, like, okay, that's Laravel, that's Drupal. Can you give some examples like what is Laravel? I mean, I mean, I would really say if you're managing data rather than content. Um, like, when the guys came to us, they had a layout of how they managed to spend nuclear fuel in Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> now, if that doesn't make you a butt pucker up, it bloody should. <laughs> the spreadsheets. And you'd look through their spreadsheets, and it would say, well, this assembly. By the way, they measure this stuff in metric tons of heavy metals. That's the unit. Um, and they're like, well, I think it's in that cache. No, no, it's over here. Like, we just lost the thing. It's 14 feet long and that's where, right? And it's, it's plutonium when it comes out. It's uranium-232 when it goes in, when it burns, it turns into plutonium. They bang them, bits fall off. They put them in a can and move those out. And they're very careful about it. Um, they have to be, but... They also have to say where everything is. And spreadsheets, isn't it? <laughs> if someone's, here's a good one, if someone's managing something in a spreadsheet and it's getting out of hand, building Laravel, you already know what you're trying to build. You can probably des describe that 
that schema already. And when you, let's see if we've got. And you can, you can tell it to build. You can tell it to build well, how your databases look, right? And you can with that you can say I also want you to build me a seeder for it to, to seed data into it. And so you can basically to PHP Artisan. I want a model, you know, a user controller. I want to see the, I want, I want the, you to build the, 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 I want to build the controller, which has all the index store, da 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 da. I want you to build the model, which is how it goes in and is defined in the database. I want you to build a seeder that allows you to write things into it, and you just put a bunch of things in it, it will go ahead and write five or six files and scaffold them all out for you, just like Drush does. Right? So there's a PHP artisan generate, and it will generate anything for you. All according to best practices. And it's not like, well, I look at this one or I look at that one and they all look different. They all follow the same convention all the way through. So if you're not entirely sure how gates work, you can go and find something that has a gate in open source, look it up and go, oh, that's fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think what the, uh, is it GC for an IP NNL.gov? Of course, it's going to ask me to log in and I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to from here. Yeah, so it's better than you data survey. Um, <coughs> that's built in Laravel. It's got a whole bunch of live wire in it for, for interesting things when they're searching for assemblies, because there's thousands and thousands of them, that will try and match things according to, goes off to HTML in the back end, uh, HTML over the wire. Um, <coughs> yeah, actually, it's a good, that was a good. Yes, if someone comes to you with a spreadsheet managed yeah, thing, there, that's a no brainer. I would just say build it in Laravel, stop talking, and just build it right now. So basically, yeah, does the system just store the data to later feed it to CMS if it's like needed? Well, I wouldn't, yeah, I'm not even to CMS. It's more non-CMS stuff. Yeah, I mean, if, if you need You could. You could write a thing that feeds it in. So far, we, I haven't done that. But clients always come up with interesting problems, right? And when they come to you, they've probably thought it through 30% at maximum. And your job then is to go, what we're going to build now, what are you trying to do? Um, that's true with Drupal or e with any project. Yeah, because like for us, like, it's kind of like a regular story that uh, so sometimes like you're working on the Drupal site and the data comes from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Like third party system. And if third party system, it could be built on variable that's Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, one of the things for the GC859 is every five years, there is a report generated that says this is where everything is. So the facilities and the generating companies need to account for everything, every piece of FISAR material. Then they can go through and they do it by hand and they fill out spreadsheets and they keep track of it in this and this validates everything at every moment. You can't hand an assembly off to someone without them accepting it. You can't have it in multiple places at the same time. It will tell you how much material is next to each other at any moment. You can actually hit the button, and this, as long as you filled it out, right, it does a validation. Am I correct here? Am I correct here? Am I correct here? They bring it up to date, hit the button, the whole report comes out. It takes five years. Currently taking five years. Um, now, if you're using this to keep track of it, and we're only talking to a small handful of people, right? There's only so many facilities in the US that do nuclear fuel. They could do, it's a guy for a year or two. How expensive is that? All right. Now you can produce them on demand. Just press the button if you keep it up to date. Oh, they do? They were pretty bad. <laughs> when they went to six, it went to seven after six months. Then it went to eight after six months. And then it went to nine, and everyone was like, oh, really? And they slowed that down. So now they do one a year, and, and they do it generally in January. But 11 should have just come out, but they're still touching things to make it. They're not finding security. So, uh, constantly, just like, just like they do with Drupal, minor updates. Okay. You know, Composer update, minus W, let it update everything, we're all good. Run Rector to, in your PHP CS to catch anything that's, that's been deprecated, but they will tell you because they document everything. Actually, the thing I should show you, when I said they take great care with their documentation, let's find 10, here we are. I might have to shrink that down a bit. This is one of what they call their famous flag comments. Each line is three characters less than the previous one. 
They do that everywhere. That's the kind of care they take with their damn comments. Imagine what the code's like. Right? Yeah, sorry, there's another go? Yeah, yeah, everywhere. Um, you'll enjoy it. You really will super enjoy using Laravel. Bootcamp.laravel.com and the Laravel, the book, Matt Stouffer book. Third edition, don't get the second edition. That's yeah, the top. Thanks. If anyone wants to talk about Laravel or Drupal, I'm always to always talk about them. <laughs> <laughs>